I was desperate for a job. I was in my final years of college and I had a lot of student loan built up. As soon as I saw the night guard job advert in the local newspaper, I knew that I was the fit for the job. I usually stay up late each night anyway, so it wouldn't make a difference to my schedule. I realized that I could also just chill on my phone the whole shift and get paid for it. We had a small local subway station for our town. It only had one platform and very few trains ever went through there. The subway station itself was very old and it was only used by the residents of the town. Recently, the old night guard for the subway station had retired and they needed someone to take over the position. As soon as I called, they immediately hired me on the spot. Looks like this wasn't a popular job. Let me give you a little description of the subway station. I've only ever been to the station a few times. So basically, you walk down the stairs to get to the subway. Yes, it's underground. Then you will see the long tracks extending forever on either side of you and also a short platform for boarding the train. On the platform to your right would be a ticket and also a security guard booth. Nowadays, you can just tap your metro card so the booth was used as a security guard booth. Since it was an older subway station, the lighting also wasn't very good. It was very poorly lit and it had a very creepy vibe to it. There were shadows everywhere and the light was so dim that it took your eyes a while to adjust and to be able to see your surroundings. So anyways, here I was now making my way to my little security booth. The day guard shook hands with me and as he left, he wished me good luck. Who the heck wishes you good luck as they leave you to your shift? So I ignored it and I got myself settled. I read through the boring instruction manual that outlined basic evacuation procedures and what to do in unlikely scenarios like a bomb threat. My shift was from 10pm to 5am. I was about to just go on my phone and scroll through Reddit when my eye caught on a single piece of paper. It was titled, Must Read Important Rules. The title was overwhelming and written in big red blocky letters. I picked up the sheet and I read it. This is what it said. If you see a man in a black tuxedo holding a bright red leather bag, walk in asking for a ticket. Say, I don't work here and immediately turn around. He will not be there when you turn back around. If you see a dark figure in camera number four, quickly look away and never look at that camera again. If you start to hear whistling, get out immediately. Around 12 a.m. you may see a woman with an umbrella come into the subway station. She will be walking facing away from you. Do not under any circumstances try to look at the woman's face. If you see yourself staring back at you from any of the cameras, immediately cover up that camera. You may hear yourself speaking, telling you to come out. Stay put in your booth and do not come out. If the door to the booth starts shaking and tries to open, push it closed as hard as you can. Do not, whatever you do, let that door open. An extension to rule number four, if you see yourself staring at you from the booth window, Immediately look away and hold that door shut as hard as you can. If you notice that the clock on the wall has stopped working, immediately hide under the desk and do not come out until you start hearing the ticking of the clock again. At 3.03 a.m., a weird looking train will arrive. You will hear it from its distinct horn that doesn't sound like any other train. Carefully look out and see if anybody steps out of the train. If you see even a single person depart from that train, immediately grab the handgun in your drawer and shoot them, no matter who the person is. If the train departs and you still haven't shot the person, well, then it's too late. Your clock, a phone, or any device that shows the time will try to deceive you. They will show the time incorrectly and instead show that your shift is ended. They are trying to get you to come out. If you feel like the time is not right, stay put in your booth and wait until the morning, and then you see people walking into the subway station. 
Apart from the weird train that will come, you should only see one other normal train arrive at the station at exactly 11pm. That will be the last train until 5am. If you see any other train arrive at the station, no, you are not tripping. Hide in your booth and wait it out until the morning. If you break any of the above underlined rules, we are no longer responsible for your safety. We will nonetheless come to collect you in the morning if anything goes wrong. The safest place at the station if you break the rules is on the tracks. The subway management team. So yeah, like many of you are probably thinking, the rules sounded totally fake. And I agreed. I relaxed back in my seat and looked out the side window of the booth. Suddenly, a man in a black tuxedo came inside the station. He knocked on the glass. My heartbeat flew like a plane as I saw the man in the tuxedo ask me for a ticket. My body was suddenly frozen on the spot. I was unable to speak. My voice got trapped in my throat. I barely managed to choke out. No, I don't work here. The man suddenly seemed confused. His face slowly got even more distorted. His left eye got larger and larger. His nose bent at awkward angles and his mouth twisted impossibly long. I grimaced at the sight and nearly threw up my dinner on the floor. The man turned away and literally crawled out of the station before his body got so messed up that he would be unable to move it. Well, I guess that was the first rule. I'll make sure to update you guys throughout the night. I'm definitely not coming back after this shift. I was very traumatized after seeing a man turn into some messed up organism right in front of my eyes. I just sat in the booth rereading the rules again and again. It was so dark in here that I had to use the small lamp on the table next to me. Man, they really need to fix the lights here. Yeah, and I also realized that I had already broken the first rule. Hopefully, other than traumatizing me, it didn't do much damage. This is going to be a great shift. The first thing that I tried was to walk out, but I could see movement in my peripheral vision. They got closer as I moved towards the exit. The shadows in the station elongated towards me and I got a horrible feeling in my gut. I'm telling you that I won't even make it a few steps outside the station if I exit before the end of my shaft. I ran back to my booth and I just sat there. It felt like the shadows themselves were watching me. Suddenly, I saw movement in one of the cameras. There was a dark figure. No, I can't even call it a figure. It was a literal monster. It was worse than your worst nightmare. It had four arms or were they tentacles. They each ended in a razor sharp point. Were those eyes all over its body? It had red beads like things over its whole body. They reminded me of small bright red jewels on a pitch black fabric. It had things coming out of its mouth. That's all that I can really call them, things. They weren't like tentacles, they were twisted and curled like worms, as if it was vomiting its entire brain out. It had legs like the fins of a fish, thin and floppy. How was it even standing up straight? Suddenly it dawned on me. I quickly tore my eyes off the camera feed, and I covered it with my jacket. The whole image of the creature had been fully etched into my brain, and I was shaking uncontrollably. I swear that I hadn't looked for too long. Chills ran up my spine as I heard a high-pitched whistle. It sounded excited and hungry. More shrill whistles echoed around the dark subway station. My whole body was frozen on the spot, and I swear that the creature could hear my panicked heartbeat. The whistles, they got louder and louder, as if they were coming closer. A black, sticky liquid oozed out from underneath the door of my booth. I backed up in the second time this night, I nearly lost my dinner on the floor. My stomach must be very strong or something. 
The liquid bubbled and seeped in very slowly. It didn't have a color. It was the color of nothingness. I was mesmerized by it. It was the color that you see in between your dreams and night. It was the color that a blind man would see. I suddenly saw the same creature that I saw on the camera feed and now literally touching the glass of my booth. I let out a sharp yelp as the creature suddenly moved towards the door and the doorknob started rattling. And then I heard another sound. A sound that made the hairs in the back of my neck stand up. Just when I thought I couldn't experience any more fear than what I was currently experiencing, all of my muscles locked up. I was literally frozen in fear. The sound was indescribable. It was a mixture of moans and laughter, crying and shouting. It was a sound nothing can recreate. The sound blared like a horn and my brain suddenly processed what was happening. The phantom train was coming. The creature that was at the door of my booth looked scared too. It spasmed all over like a fish out of water. Suddenly it turned around and it ran and slithered. I don't even know what word to use for its movement. Well, it looks like I just survived breaking another rule. Thanks to that phantom train. The train slowly came into the station. Have you guys ever watched Thomas the Tank Engine before? Well, yeah, that's exactly how the train looked. It had a human face embedded into its front. Other than that, though, the train was fairly normal, and it came to a stop on the platform. I couldn't forget the image of the face of the train looking at me as it stopped by. It had an unnatural grin to it. Its eyes were way too big and cartoony. It took a lot of effort to snap out of it and pick up the handgun out of the drawer under my desk. It was already loaded. I did not want to break this rule. Even if the creature that came after me was scared of this train, I honestly do not want to face whatever comes out of it. Something deep in my gut told me that if this time I failed to follow the rule, that I wouldn't be making it out of the subway. Guess who came out? It was my little sister. She had recently turned 15. She walked out looking dazed like she had just woken up. She looked around and saw the train station. Her eyes lit up as soon as she saw me. I pointed the gun at her and her face crossed over with fear and concern. She told me to put it down. She asked me why I was doing this. But suddenly the train blared its hideous horn and the doors started to shut. My sister looked back, equally disgusted at the sound. I pulled the trigger. It all happened in slow motion. The handgun made a loud sound that echoed all across the subway station. The bullet pierced the back of my sister's head and made red a splatter everywhere. She dropped like a stone and red gushed out of her wound like a waterfall. It pulled all around her lifeless body. The train left, its horn mocking me. I quickly ran back to my booth and broke down. I cried for what seemed like hours and screamed at the subway station. She had seemed so real. Was it actually her real body laying there? Or did I just take the life of my sister? No, I couldn't have. I'm trying to calm down by typing this up. It's still only 3.20 a.m. and I have around two hours to go before my shift ends. I don't think that'll make it. This isn't a subway station. It's somewhere much worse. As soon as I finished typing up my last post, it dawned on me that the clock had stopped ticking. I scrambled over to my desk and I got underneath it. Just as I had slipped my head under the desk, I caught a view of the platform. My sister's body got up like nothing had happened and stared blankly ahead. Shadows from the station twisted and curled into weird sorts of silhouettes. I wasn't going to break another rule, so I tore my eyes off the site and hid under the desk. 
I checked the time on my watch. 4.30 a.m. I only had 30 minutes left before my shift ended. I nearly jumped in pure ecstasy. Finally, this nightmare was going to be over. Finally, I could go home and check on my sister. The clock started its rhythmic ticking again, and I pulled myself out from under the desk. I checked my watch again. 5 a.m. Wait a minute, hold up. How did 30 minutes pass away so fast? But just then I remembered the rule. All of my timekeeping devices may show the time differently to trick me. That meant that I had to wait in my booth and not come out until it's morning, and I see people walking into the station. I scan the camera feed for anything new making sure not to look at camera 4, which was conveniently set away from all of the other cameras. But then the worst thing possible happened. I saw myself staring at me from camera 2. I had a painful grin on my face. My eyes were so wide open. I swear that they could have popped out of my sockets at any moment. Before I broke another rule, I quickly tore away my eyes from the disturbing sight, and I came face to face with my twin, staring at me from outside of the booth. I jumped to the door and pushed for dear life. Luckily, the door opened inward, so it was so much easier for me to hold it. I only had to push. My twin battered itself onto the door repeatedly. Big, bulky thuds shook my whole body. My twin's shoulder started to get bloody, but he continued unfazed. I could feel myself get pushed further and further back every time that he rammed into the door. I wasn't going to be able to hold the door for much longer. I quickly picked up my handgun from the desk and I turned the safety off. As soon as my twin moved back, and got ready to ram in through the door again. I aimed my gun at the door. My mind took over for me at that moment. Adrenaline pushed through my body and my heart rate was high as ever. My demented twin pushed through the door and fell on the floor, and I shot three rounds directly into him. I jumped past his body and sprinted to the tracks. Demented me got up again and ran towards me at lightning speed. I jumped off the platform and onto the tracks and the last thing that I remembered was hearing my demented twins ragged breathing right behind me and the crushing impact of my body on the metal tracks. I woke up with a dull pain throbbing through my forehead. I tried to get up and felt even more pain in my knees and my left wrist. How long had I been out for? I had lost all track of time. I crawled across the tracks to the far wall of the subway station and I slumped against it. My foggy mind cleared and all the memories of this place came rushing back. I looked around at the dark as ever subway station for any more threats. My twin had thankfully disappeared. I had the subway station all to myself again. I was bruised all over and I had definitely broken something in both my knees. I had a big, deep gash in my forehead. My left wrist was definitely broken and it was severely swollen. I could not move it without feeling intense pain. The adrenaline rush had long worn off and I felt defeated and extremely tired. If I was going to die here, I wanted to die in peace at least. I took out my phone out of my pocket. The screen was cracked into a million pieces and it wouldn't turn on. My watch was still working surprisingly, although its glass was also shattered. 4.05 AM I had no idea if this was the actual time or not. Either way, I was pretty much unable to get onto the high platform again and walk out of the subway station. I couldn't call for help, which I just realized. Why the heck did I not call the police as soon as I had broke the first rule, so that they could come and get me out of here? I had made several poor choices along the way and now here I am, ready to die on the tracks. 
Suddenly, a woman with a deep black umbrella walked into the station. She was facing away from me and looked confused. Hey, can you call more people? I'm stuck in here. Please, I need help. I desperately spoke out. Crap. I realized too late as the woman turned around. Here we go. I just broke another rule. She turned around and gasped as she saw me. She came closer. I guess that's the final rule that I would ever break, I thought. Letting the creature do whatever it wanted. Surprisingly, though, the woman asked me if I was okay and told me to stay put and wait until she got the ambulance here. And then she picked up her phone and started calling. I was only able to mumble the thanks before I passed out again. I guess I just got very lucky. I had pretty much broken every single rule on that list and I still survived. I returned home and thankfully my sister was all well. I told my family that I fell on the stairs of the subway station to explain the injuries which they are definitely not buying. But then again, I don't want to tell them about the rules or they'll think that the head trauma has made me crazy. Today, I received a text on my phone. Congratulations that you have been promoted to work as a night guard on our only night train. We have also sent a sum of $100,000 to your bank account as your pay for your first shift. We hope to see you at Redacted for your next shift in two weeks. Yeah, I don't know whether I believe it or not. I mean, the money's pretty amazing, but do I really want to go through something like that again? Guess I'll have to wait and see. My last job was a bit dangerous and disturbing, but I got a rather hefty payment for just the first shift and then a promotion to work as security on a night train. My previous job was working as a night guard for my local subway station. So yeah, this morning I got a text from my employer. I only know them as the subway management team, asking me to come to my local station for my first shift on the train. I made my way to the subway station on time at 9pm. The train that I would be riding on for the next 8 hours had arrived at the station. It was a very modern looking train with automatic doors and it was 6 compartments long. My security compartment would be the second one from the front as I was told in the text message. As I got on the train, I noticed that each compartment except for these special compartments had a main lobby type area with four seats on either side facing the windows and a travel door that linked it to the next compartment on the left side from the entrance door. On the right were either a few steps leading up to an upper seating area that was similar to the interior of the bus and a few steps leading down to an exactly identical seating area. If you need help visualizing the train compartments, search up Sydney Trains and you'll get what I mean. The security compartment was very different to the main ones. It had a camera feed and a desk with drawers. It also had a chair that I could sit on. The security compartment required a key to open it. The driver compartment could be accessed from the security compartment via a door. As I was about to get on the train, a guy exited the last security compartment and handed me a security badge and the keys to the compartment. He patted me on the back and wished me good luck. I cringed as soon as he had said it, as my mind filled with the events of my previous job. When I got into the security compartment, I found the usual employee manual, but I also once again found a sheet of rules. It read, all passengers must be escorted off the train on Station 6. The train will stop for 5 minutes on Station 6. Check all 4 carriages and make sure that every passenger has left the train. After the train has left Station 6, go back to the security compartment. You must do this as soon as the doors of the train start closing. Run if you have to. If you hear people talking, stay put inside your security compartment and check the camera feed. If you see people sitting in compartment 4, 
immediately disable the automatic doors that connect compartment 4 to 3. You must do this as soon as possible before they notice. If they even glance at the camera, they have noticed. If the people you see in your camera feed start approaching compartment 3, get the knife from the drawer and go stab all of them before they reach compartment 3. You are to make rounds of the full train every 15 minutes from the point you see the people in compartment 4 to the point that the train comes back to the original station and is done a full loop. If during your rounds you see anybody get on the train, hide. Don't hide in your security compartment. Hide somewhere that they won't find you. They will give up at the next stop and leave the train. If during your rounds you hear hysterical laughing, turn off all the lights to that compartment, but don't disable the travel doors to the compartment. An extension to rule number seven. If you see the thing making the laughing sound, get out of that compartment and disable the doors to it. The creature may trick you by disappearing as soon as you see it, but make sure you disable the doors. You may find a young girl in a red dress in one of the compartments looking lost. Ignore her and do not look in her direction. She may plead for help or do anything to get your attention, but do not look her way or interact with her in any way. At stops 9 and 13, get off and on the train. At stop 13, you may see a man sitting in a security booth. Do not get off the train or he will shoot you. You may see someone else you didn't see before on the train get off and get shot by the security guard. Do not interfere. The train may break down at any point during the journey and all the electrical power will go out. Keep calm and stay in your position. You may feel things moving around you in the dark or even hear things. Ignore everything. The train will start up again and will eventually move on. Continue normally. Check the camera feed every 30 minutes after reaching stop 13. You may see various creatures or people sitting in the seats. You may see violence. Make sure that you do not interfere in any way. At the same time, you may have to do a round of the train. Keep doing the rounds and still go through that compartment. The creatures can only be seen on the camera feed. If you notice that you're stopping at the same stop over and over again, and go to compartment 4 and sit on the very back seat. Wait until the stops continue and then you can leave the seat. On one of your rounds you may find the train seats to be bloody. Use the cleaning cloth in the drawer and clean the seats. The lights on the train may go out at any time during your rounds. Use the flashlight that we have provided and continue your round. If you see anything in the dark, run back to security and disable the doors to that compartment. You can enable the doors once the lights come back on. If the train gets too quiet and you literally don't hear anything, run back to security and put loud music on your phone to fill the silence. Continue your shift in rounds once you hear the steady sound of the train engine again. If the train stops for longer than 5 minutes at any stop, check on the driver. If he's not there, manually close the doors of the train and keep the train going until it loops back to your stop and get off there. You will also have to continue your security duties. If you walk into compartment 5 by accident, Immediately get out before the automatic doors close behind you. If the doors close behind you and you're stuck in compartment 5, jump off the train. The reason this rule is so important is because there is no compartment 5. If you break any of the above underlined rules, we are not responsible for your general health and safety. We will nonetheless come to collect you at your entry station. The train has just started moving again. My current station is station 1. I'm gonna try to read the rules and memorize them and get myself familiar with the train before we get going too far. Wish me luck. I made my way around the train and it was decently full. Definitely wasn't packed but it wasn't empty either. Everybody was tired from work and they were returning home. I was just starting my shift. 
I went back to the security cabin and the door clicked shut behind me. Auto locking door, that should come in handy. I mocked as I sat down, rereading the rules. The train ride was only dark tunnels. After a long and uneventful ride, the train finally reached Station 6. I got out of my security cabin and ushered everybody off the train. I then did a round of all four cabins and had to wake up a few sleeping passengers to get them off. The train doors then started to close and it was just me and whatever else was on this train. I quickly set up my watch to alert me every 15 minutes to do my rounds. So far so good. Just then though, I realized that I had messed up roll number two. Chills went up my spine and my heart rate quickened. I was at the end of compartment one so all I had to do was go through the seating area and then straight through to security. I suddenly started running as soon as the plan formed in my head. I had broken the rule but that doesn't mean I just stand there and wait for something to come and get me. Suddenly I slammed into a wall. I was momentarily dazed as I really wasn't expecting one to be there. Wait, hold up. It wasn't a wall. I had just crashed into a horrifying creature. It was of a deep black color. No, not black. It was the color of nothingness. The total absence of light. It had bright red eye like protrusions all over its body. In place of a face it had tentacles bulging out of a deep hole in and the place of a mouth. Since it was hunched over I felt its wet slimy tentacles in my hair. This was the same creature from the subway station. This time I wasn't in the safety of my booth though, and nothing was going to stop it from getting me. I was frozen in fear for a while until the creature let out a deep, guttural growl. It kicked me out of my state and I started running for my life. It reached out its claws and scratched me painfully on my chest. It made the sound of chalk on a chalkboard as the rough tips of its claws ripped through my shirt and shredded my skin. Warm blood leaked out of my chest. I continued running and I grabbed my chest. That was now searing and ugly pain. I got into the security compartment just in time. The creature made a massive bang against the door. I quickly reached into the cabinet next to my desk and found a first aid kit. The creature continued repeatedly banging itself into the door. At some point finally it went away. After ripping open my shirt, I applied the unmarked lotion that I found onto my skin, and I wrapped bandages across my torso. The cuts weren't too deep, but they had mangled the upper layer of my skin and covered a great area, and it stung like crazy. I picked up my water bottle with shaking hands and took massive gulps. I had already broken the second rule on the list. Suddenly, I heard loud and joyous talking outside of my security compartment. I knew that there was a rule relating to that, so I pulled out the rule sheet from my pocket and I scanned it. Yes, I have to disable the doors to compartment 4. I quickly looked at the camera feed and saw a group of people sitting at the back of compartment 4 in the upper story. I swear that one of them glanced up at the camera as I disabled the doors. Their face sent chills down my spine, and it wasn't because of their expression. It was because he looked exactly like me. Wait, no, he was me. And then all four of them looked up. They were all copies of me. Their wide, creepy grins sent chills down my spine. They suddenly got up and walked towards the travel doors in unison. Luckily, I had disabled the doors as soon as I had heard the voices. And guess what? Just then, my watch beeps to politely tell me that it was time to take a relaxing round of the train. I picked up the knife from the drawer and made sure that I had disabled the doors to compartment 4. All of the other compartments were empty, but when I reached the end of compartment 3, where the travel door was to compartment 4, I saw a sight that snapped my mind. There they were, the four copies of me pressed against the glass. 
They looked odd, like they were drugged. Drool dripped down their faces and their eyes went wide at the sight of me. Then, as if on cue, they all started fighting each other. They fought like wild dogs, biting each other, poking each other in the eyes. Red dripped on the floor like from a tap, but they continued. They destroyed each other. I could not continue to watch. They punched and kicked each other until their faces were unrecognizable. I turned around and ran straight back to security. I started crying hysterically inside and pulled at the locks of my hair. Why in the world did I come back to this job? What are those things and what train am I on? I screamed at all the walls, but they remained silent in response. I started punching them and didn't stop until I noticed blood on my face. And then I wrapped my hands up in bandages. I swear that I look like a zombie apocalypse video game character. I'm currently typing this up to calm down. So far, I've only broken one rule. I'll have to go on another round soon. I'm going to keep updating if I'm still alive. Pray for me. I want to get out of this place. As soon as I had posted the last post, the train stopped at Station 8. I realized that at the next stop, I would have to get on and off the train. It was also time for another round, so I came out of my security compartment. I looked outside the train doors to check out the station. It was kind of the same as my local station, but it had no guard booth. Lucky, nobody has to work there. My thoughts were interrupted by a fast and dark figure that darted into the train. Uh, wait, crap. I, I know there's a rule about that. Suddenly, I remembered it and quickly scrambled for the upper seating of the first compartment. I had already found myself a very good hiding spot. I slipped under the seats and I held my breath. I could hear thundering footsteps walk towards me. I also heard heavy panting, the sounds that somebody would make after having nearly drowned. I felt something wet near my feet and I looked down. I suppressed my scream as I saw the pool of blood spreading on the ground. It was a mesmerizing deep red color, consistent throughout. The blood was thick and it oozed slowly to spread across the floor. The footsteps then went away. The train doors closed and the train got moving again. I got up from under the seat and there was no pool of blood on the floor. It was like I was hallucinating. I composed myself and decided to continue my round. As I reached the end of compartment 3, I realized that the travel doors to compartment 4 were now enabled again. I pulled out the sharp knife that I had been given, and I cautiously walked inside. The compartment was empty. Suddenly, my eyes caught on to the bloodied seats. I quickly pulled out the microfiber cloth that they had provided me and I scrubbed them down. The blood went away pretty easily. As I got out of compartment 4, the automated PA system announced that it was station 9. A ah, big deal. I continued making my way back and I realized too late. Crap. The train doors closed and I cringed at what was going to happen next. And then as all the lights in the compartment snapped out and all the travel doors locked themselves, I went to the entrance doors and I tried to pull them open. They wouldn't budge and I heard low moans in the dark. There were many of them. They rose out from underneath the seats. Some held weapons and some were barely able to stand. Some were crawling. But then they started speaking. We died here and you must too. I got desperate and I grabbed the fire escape hammer. I smashed the glass of the travel doors. I hit it and hit it until there was enough of a gap for me to get through. Luckily, the train hadn't started moving yet and so, I ran out onto the platform and entered via compartment 3. While I was doing that, one of the zombies grabbed a hold of my ankle. Its grip was weak and I pushed away, but it was so icy that I'll never forget. The train was completely normal. I walked back into compartment 4 and there were no longer any zombies. The only proof of what had just happened was these smashed travel doors. 
At this point, I was in shock and I couldn't really feel anything anymore. So I went back to the security room. Suddenly, I realized that the train was still stopped at the platform. I went to the driver's compartment and I realized that there was no driver. I got into the seat and got the train up and running again. The train was set to work automatically, so all I had to do was start it up. I rested in security for the next 15 minutes before my next round. I scrolled through my phone, not even reading anything. I couldn't comprehend the words on the screen. My phone was the only anchor to reality that I had. Other than that, it was me, the train, and this set of rules. Before I knew it, my time was up and I got up for another round. I really hoped that nothing would happen. I couldn't deal with anything else. I walked out of security and into compartment one. I could hear a faint sobbing and I immediately looked to my left. There was a girl in a distinct red dress. She had her face buried in her hands. I immediately looked away. The girl shouted after me. Have you seen my mommy? Have you seen my daddy? Help me, I'm lost. Why don't you help me? I practically sprinted as her voice turned louder. And guess what happened? Guess my luck. The lights went out and the train came to a stop. I quickly shifted to the seat closest to me and I sat down. I heard the girl's voice again. I'm coming for you. And then she giggled. It sent chills up my spine. I then also heard soft moans in the dark and felt that same icy grip on my ankle. I shivered and I started crying. Just leave me alone. I stammered to no one in particular. I could hear laughing and giggling all around me. They were mocking me, laughing at my despair and misery. Anger surged through my veins. I punched aimlessly in the air, hitting nothing. But suddenly, I felt something next to me on the seat. Millions of bugs crawling up my legs. I screamed for help, but no one came. The lights turned on all at once. There was nothing on me and no one around me. I quickly got up and went to finish my rounds. I passed through the compartment checking each. Compartment 2, clear. Compartment 3, clear. Compartment 4, clear. Compart. I realized too late. The travel doors had closed behind me. I pounded on the travel doors and I swore loudly. I grabbed another fire hammer and smashed the glass windows in the travel doors. But I could only fit my hand through those. I hit the door more but the door wouldn't budge. After several hits, the metal was barely dented. And then I heard the noises behind me. First off, I've noticed that you guys are interested in the history of the subway station. Some of you guys have also been speculating why such a job even exists. Our local subway station was built in the 1950s. The train station has been the same ever since then, except for a few changes and renovations to adapt to modern technology and trains. The subway station has been closed down many times over the years, till the 2000s due to unfortunate incidents. In the 2000s, a new company came in and bought the station and promised to manage it properly. There's no information about the company on the web and it is simply known as the Subway Management Team. After the team took over, nothing has ever went wrong in the station. They're probably the ones that invented the rules and tired the guards. I personally think the reason that this job exists is to prevent incidents like the ones that happened before and to also prevent the creatures of whatever is on the subway and train from entering into our world. It is so they remain confined to only these locations and stay put, and which would explain the rules of shooting people coming off the train and stabbing the people coming out of compartment 4 if they decide to. Other rules may be to simply protect the guard, such as getting on and off at stops 9 and 13, and not going into compartment 5. Oh yeah, speaking of compartment 5, I barely made it out. I turned around and behind me were the same zombies that I saw from before. 
They had excited looks on their faces as they drew closer. They took their time moving slowly as if to mock me, but suddenly an idea formed in my head. They reached out like they were sleepwalking. I felt claustrophobic as they closed in on me. Their faces and bodies were rotten and grotesque. The smell made me gag. I pulled out my knife and I started slashing at them. They continued, unfazed and hungry for my flesh. I pushed through the crowd to the entry and exit doors at the side of the compartment and hit it with the fire hammer. The glass immediately shattered. My arms and hands shook from the adrenaline. I hit the glass harder and harder. It broke away pretty quickly. Since these doors were mostly glass and plastic, I could easily jump through the door without having it being fully open. The travel doors only had smaller windows. The zombies were fast to follow when they started running at me. I realized that the train had stopped at some station, and I didn't have to jump on the tracks and hurt myself. I leapt out through the gap and I landed on the platform. A gunshot whizzed past my head. I realized very quickly that I had indeed jumped off the train at station 13. There was a guard right in front of me with a gun in hand. He was probably just following the rules thinking that I was also a monster. The zombies burst out from the train behind me. The security guard's eyes widened and he shot. The gunshot nearly connected with my head. More creatures of all sorts came off the train. They were all hideous and otherworldly. Some of them fought each other. Some of them looked around, sniffing for blood. I had just unleashed the entire horde into the subway station. Many of them ran outside the station like crazy, ready to attack people on the streets. The security guard shot a gun, and this time he did not miss. It all happened in slow motion. The shot connected with my arm and blood went everywhere. I felt a weird burning sensation in it. I was surprised that I didn't feel any pain. Must have been shock. I watched as the blood soaked through the entire sleeve of my shirt. Oh, and then the pain set in and it hurt like crazy. My knees grew weak and I collapsed. As if that wasn't enough, the security guard shot another one and the bullet hit my hip bone. I heard a disgusting grinding and cracking sound. First, I just felt shock in my hip and then the pain had set in. It was agonizing. The only thing that I could feel or think was pain. I collapsed fully onto the ground and passed in and out of consciousness. And then finally, after an agonizingly long time, it all faded to black. I woke up in a hospital bed, hooked up to a bunch of machines and an IV drip. My arm ached and my torso hurt when I tried to move it. The nurses saw that I had woken up and quickly came over. They explained my injuries to me in a blur and told me about the surgeries that they had to perform on me. I had been shifting in and out of consciousness for about two days now. It would take me a long time to recover from the gunshots. After a while, serious looking men in suits had appeared. This was definitely some government thing. They offered to pay my medical fees and give me lots of compensation if I kept my mouth shut. I didn't want to be taken away. They didn't explain anything to me and insisted that I forgot about it for my own good. My family was also compensated for lots and told to not spread anything. Everything was covered up as some sort of accident, and the subway station now remains closed to this day. The subway management company disappeared and all records of it were gone. The train tracks have been completely closed off, and no train has been able to run there. Our small town now usually sees lots of military helicopters in the sky and lots of police cars patrolling around. I swear that our town has been quarantined as there has been rumors of military trucks on the roads, not letting anybody in or out. Since then, I've never been able to go into a subway station. Even images of trains send me into hysteria. 
I have to visit two different psychologists every week. And every night I wake up from nightmares that take me back to the station, back to that train. Sometimes I wonder, what happened to all the creatures that got off that train?